hello friends welcome back to my channel today we are going to talk about uh, different buckets available in Splunk uh, you would have seen uh, one of my tutorial we have went through the Splunk indexes and the bucket so specifically in this tutorial we'll talk about fish bucket so it's something new so we will just go through what is the uh, purpose of fish bucket and we'll also have some recap on the previous buckets we uh, talk about where the Splunk indexes are getting stored and what are the features in the fish bucket okay so if you haven't subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe like the video share and comment so I have a Splunk instance running on CentOS so if you don't know how to set up Splunk on CentOS please check my tutorial how to install Splunk on CentOS okay. so uh, let me first go to the place where uh, we have uh, indexes store right so before that let me open my Splunk web portal as well so if you see I have the Splunk running and if I go to search and reporting if I type index so you, I'll be able to see a few indexes like underscore audit internal introspection metrics and you know, a few others like a fish bucket the main so main is the default index okay and I think I also have a test index which I have uh, created when I imported some uh, data into it okay so I think it's I don't have any data for last 24 hours so let me see so you can see there are some data for test index okay so if you want to know where the what all the index available you can go to settings indexes okay so you'll be able to see the list of index here like underscore audit underscore internal so all those indexes will be here so you can even see the fish bucket main you know splunk logger test and it will sh to show you what is the home path you know how many how much maximum size we have set what is the current size right so you can see all those details here okay and the, if you want to create a new index you can click on create new index and you can enter these details and you can save it and you can use that index for your uh, in getting some data in as part of your file monitoring and you can map those index as a collection okay so that is a basic uh, thing happening in the uh, no, the web portal so let me go back to the splunk server so if i go to the splunk server my splunk home location is slash opt slash splunk and under bin is the normal splunk files are available right so splunk d those files are available here so the default location for the indexes uh, is in this location slash opt slash splunk and it should be var and it should be lib then splunk again okay so if I go to this location, you will be able to see some of the folders like an audit, default DB, history DB, introspection, telemetry, right? Fish bucket. So, so this is the default location for uh, the your indexes. So you always have to make sure that this is this look. You no know, indexes are getting backed up. So some of these indexes are deleted, means your all uh, data is gone. You will have to re-index everything. Okay, so just to give a recap so we would have seen what kind of buckets we have so if i go back to this default db you can see there are different other folders like call db db thought db right so uh, we have would have, we have spoke about like a different kind of uh, buckets right so when splunk index is data it is put into different buckets so one is called hot buckets then another one is warm bucket then cold bucket and uh, thought bucket right so uh, what happened is this if i go back to the db so this is the location where we will have the hot and warm buckets right so this is the main uh, files which uh, splunk always read and write so uh, when it's not used it will be moved to cold and it, then it goes to the frozen bucket okay and thought is something which is used to retrieve the uh, buckets you know, using some method so we can retrieve those things so I'm not going to talk much about that so you can uh, go through those in my tutorial on index okay so let me go back to folder so you can see there is one called fish bucket 
so this is something new for us so uh, you may ask what is fish bucket so if I go back to the folder fish bucket you can see here also there are a lot of folders like cold DB data model DB raw data Splunk private DB thought DB but uh, if you ask me fish bucket is not something for a human to get much in to intervene from it so basically fish bucket is not for a normal person to go and check what is happening there so the fish bucket is mostly used by Splunk admins to decipher you know if there are some input issues or anything with respect to the Splunk indexing the data so that is the basic uh, thing uh, used for fish bucket so let me go back to the portal and let me do a search for the index okay so let me go and index equal to underscore the fish bucket okay so there is a index colon score fish bucket if I search for this see I don't I'm not getting any data out of this but if I do search with any other index like underscore audit See, I'm getting some data from the search. Why I don't, I'm not able to see anything with fish bucket. So uh, this is probably, you know, the reason is because the old, the new version of Splunk, we are not able to see any output here. But uh, probably the old version of Splunk, you must have seen some output in the search. So uh, let me show you some detail how it must have looked. So usually this uh, fish bucket. You know you you when you do a search or the content in the fish bucket will have few parameters okay so few things will be related to you know which is used by Splunk to read you know what are the content has been input or already indexed so in the previous cases you may see like uh, something like this 58a3 right some uh, CRC contents right and then will be some six CRC some pointers some modification time and uh, you know some uh, name file name from where this uh, file is getting indexed and the source of the file so these are some characteristics of the fish bucket so you will get a timestamp and also a CRC of the file a seek pointer and there is a time uh, stamp on when it is last change and the full path of the file and full path of the source okay so what is the benefit of this so whenever Splunk uh, index any file it creates some entries there so this fish bucket helps to uh, the Splunk file monitoring system that when there is a new file is coming it will go and check in the fish bucket whether this file has been already indexed so how it checks is it will check the CRC section or it will check the pointer whether this file you know it's considered you know it's uh, from the initial uh, point of the file itself it has been indexed or so after some part you know it has it has been changed so depending upon that the Splunk will decide whether I have to re-index this file or I don't have to so that is the main benefit of this fish bucket okay so let me go back to the screen of uh, Splunk server now what will happen if I delete all the fish bucket folder so if you delete the whole fish bucket ball uh, folder uh, Splunk is going to re-index all your data so when you work on a fish bucket please be very careful what you're doing because otherwise the whole uh, system has to be re-indexed and you know you will have so much of time to uh, do all those uh, scan indexing and doing your queries again so that has to be very careful okay so normally when uh, the Splunk keep re-indexing uh, new files, it will keep adding the new CRC and the seek pointer and modification time. So whenever it changes, it keep uh, adding up to the new values. So it's keep increasing it. So if you see uh, those values, if there is some mismatch, then there is some problem with the indexing. That is how you can analyze whether you need to re-index the file or there is some issue in indexing the file there are some uh, Splunk tools which you can use so if you if I go to the Splunk documentation you can see there are some tool called BT tools BT prop where you can uh, see that it's uh, available inside your CD slash BT slash Splunk slash bin where I go here you may see some of the tools like BT tool and BT prop right so there are different other tools so you can use some of these tools uh, for uh, for your uh, 
uh, purpose so if I see like uh, BT prop see it says you can query the fish bucket and to monitor which are stored to monitor your input right but if you also read here for gen do not use these tools without consulting your Splunk support so it's always recommended if you don't know what exactly we are doing just get the support from Splunk support team to analyze these things so uh, that is the best best option to do it so let me sh show you some some command which how we can run it okay so well, let me just copy this command and if I go back let me run it here see what this does is it lists whole the whole in inputs which we have configured in Splunk so you can see you know, everything what we have configured as an input in the current Splunk instance so you can see it's monitoring OPT wars log introspection so all those things it's listing in this command now let me also show some other commands or this is another command with debug okay so this also lists whole uh, index and input dot con files where is the location and uh, what we are uh, trying to uh, monitor using these files now if I go to this BT prop section where you can uh, there are different kind of commands you can use okay you can use uh, different things which you can use with the help command so you'll be able to see all those things so let me run uh, one command which is to just check the private DB okay and if I validate it will give you some, uh, all these keys and uh, what the seek pointers for this okay so there are different ways you can check it you can even uh, map some of the files so you can see what is the uh, changes happen in those files so you can analyze those things uh, using those command but I would recommend you know working on fish bucket is not that recommended unless you clearly know what has to be done but if you have some other issues you can go to the input.conf file or you know which uh, configuration which you have done and you can check it now you may also want to know where uh, how we are uh, restricting uh, this fish bucket for size because it may go high you know, if we keep it, putting all those logs into that it may go very high right so that you can uh, do it under this location it is plung slash etc slash system and uh, should be default okay so if I go there there is a file called indexes.conf right so if I read through the indexes.conf so this is the place where we'll have all the indexes details are stored right so what were the default index all called path one path all those things are uh, done so if I see there is a stanza for fish bucket now there are some uh, parameters or argument which I have said so it says you, you can restrict for 500 right and also frozen time period in seconds so any of these getting crossed so it will uh, automatically delete or you know back, uh, archive the old things so uh, this is how we can control the size of those uh, buckets so this will also help you to understand how much you can control uh, the bucket size okay. so that is all which I just want to share as part of this tutorial so I hope you has got some understanding what actually fish bucket does so it's mainly used by Splunk uh, to track all the files which is getting index so it checks uh, the fish bucket you know to check the CRC seek pointer the modification times and those things to see whether these uh, files are already indexed or there is a change which need to be re-indexed okay so i hope this uh, tutorial is informative for you right so so i would request you to kindly subscribe to my channel like the video share and comment